guys, welcome to This is the Worst Podcast. Oh my God, I'm so excited. It's finally here. It's finally here. Brittany and I are both wearing coats because we can't afford heat yet. <laughs> we need you guys to su- subscribe and like the podcast. And uh, Venmo us. Yeah, and Venmo us if you want. And, and just, subscribe to our OnlyFans as well. Yeah. We're just, you know, we're just shucking it out on all platforms. <laughs> we have no shame. Our wildly disappointing OnlyFans. I was telling my ex-husband last night about my OnlyFans and how everyone always complains because I don't show nipple or vagina. It's and just he, you in, like, just workout gear. Yeah, it literally it's just you in a parka. Yeah, like, they're like, what am I? Last night I was like, do you like my new coat? And it was just me in this coat. <laughs> Everyone's like, no. But I was like, yeah, people are like yelling at me on there. And he's like, it's me. I'm on there yelling at you. He's like, Brittany, come back to me. You don't have to do this. Yeah, like, you had a good life. Literally, when I was asking him if I should start an OnlyFans, he's like, no, you're better than that. And I'm like, I'm literally not. <laughs> Listen, there's no shame in the game. No. Listen, do what you got to fucking do, man. We're not going to be hot forever. I'm all right? not hot now. <laughs> According to your stepson, who said I took a hard left at 30. <sighs> I can't. But, li- but you know what I mean? Like, it's like I only got probably like maybe five more years before it all just fucking turns into a wild. Yeah, trash we're going to be fire. like a sugar cube underwater. <laughs> just like fucking melting away. Just two eyeballs. So I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to fucking ride this train yeah. full steam ahead. Tits out. Right. Why not? I know. Why not? I know. Who cares? Adam and Eve were born naked. And no one cared. Well. Yeah. Were they? I'm getting biblical already. (laughs) First podcast. Very biblical. We're going to get super biblical on the podcast. Okay, I'm sweating. I'm sweating too. The the menopause is kicking in. But here's the thing. Oh my God. My nipples. You can see my nipples here. Oh, (laughs) yay! Nipples! Welcome to the podcast, Nipples. Okay, guys. This is the worst podcast where we are going to talk about some of the worst shit that you have ever been through. And on this episode, we're going to kick it off holiday edition oh my god the holidays it's like a hotbed of fucking havoc 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 what's that word havoc havoc Uh oh i don't even i don't even go home for the holidays anymore yeah well you're smart (laughs) and i didn't when i was married i would just go to my exes and we had a wonderful time and then i went home this year again and i was like this is why my mom killed herself like I can't. Yeah, no, but you, people? but you know what? It is crazy. It's like you go, you, you, well, I moved across the country to get away from it all. And then you're like, okay, let me take the most happy time of year and go subject myself to what I left. Yeah. It's kind of scary. Yeah. So we just didn't do that this year. And you had a great holiday. I did. I had a yeah. great holiday. Yeah. <laughs> no shame in that. I yeah. love you guys, though. Yeah. Thanks for, uh, thanks, mom, for the looks and the tits. I do appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, mom, um, for the looks and the tits. <laughs> and for getting the fuck out of here. <gasps> we'll deal with Britney's trauma later in the okay. podcast. Um, but we do have a bunch of stories. Wait, we do, but let's not get into them. I need to tell you about my holiday first. Oh god, Jesus Christ. I knew this was this whole podcast is gonna be actually Britney's therapy session because Britney doesn't want to pay for therapy. So she's like, you know what? Let's start a podcast. <laughs> let's just start a podcast and I'll just tell you everything that's going on in my life oh my that god. I hate. No, Brittany, I went home. My family was immediately stressing me out. So I was like, whatever, I'm just gonna go to bed. Just sleep it off. Started masturbating. <laughs> My dad poked his head in my room <laughs> to say goodnight, which is an attack. You can't just open a door Bro. that your grown child. And he's like, goodnight, I love you. And the thing You're is all- so loud. It's <laughs> and I'm like, the more I try and turn it off, the louder it's getting because I'm just hitting the up button instead of the I'm having a fucking. I'm like, goodnight, dad, I love you. <laughs> just, he's like, are you working with my power tools? Her dad's an electrician. He's yeah. like, did you borrow one of my drills? Yeah. I hear a drill. <laughs> <laughs> What and I just, my eyes are rolling back uh, in my head. He's like, I heard you say daddy. Yeah. He's like, I thought I you said. In. He was concerned. Oh he was like, God. I thought I heard you screaming daddy. I, I wanted to check on you. I can't. Dude, that, isn't that the worst though, by the way? Oh my God. That is the fucking worst. That I is used, the worst. I was a super horny kid. I don't know why. I've never had any sexual abuse or anything like that. But I was like masturbating when I was like six. It was weird, I don't right? Think- Sexual abuse makes you horny. I don't know, but some Let's some people back s- up for a second. Here. Some people say like, that like my uncle never fucked me, but still, I was trying to fuck him really, really hard. I was giving it my best shot. No, but they say sometimes if you're exposed to sexual things young, it makes you more sexual. But I never was, and I was just horny from the start. And I remember I used to like hump my pillows and my yeah. stuffed animals and yeah. shit. And I used to lock my door, but my door was the kind of door that if you knocked. It just opened. Even if it was locked, it was just real shitty Pennsylvania (laughs) doors from like 1820. You know what I mean? Or if you like got the door wet, you could just put your hand through it. (laughs) It's like made of fucking paper. You could just see through the door. All right. It wasn't a door. It was a curtain. (laughs) 
No, but anyway, so it's one of those beaded <laughs> curtains, like hippie curtains. <laughs> so I was fucking masturbating, humping my pillow, and my dad would always do the same thing. He'd knock, but the door would just push open. <laughs> and I remember I like could see him out of the corner of my eye, and I was like humping my stuffed animal, and he just like looked so disappointed, and he just closed the door. <laughs> he didn't even say anything. He didn't even say goodnight. He was just like, okay, all right. Well, okay. that's weird for a five year old. Um, okay. Well, five? Well, I was young. I oh was my definitely God. young, dude. Me and my neighbor. Oh boy. My good neighbor. Start. We used to good play start. doctor. Okay. Yeah. Really. Sure. Young. How and old was your neighbor? We were like both five. I'm oh. like, he was 37. Yeah. I was six. Yeah, you're like, I never had any sexual trauma. <laughs> Dr. Dave no, but next we door played Operation on me all day. <laughs> We did. We used to like. We used to like. We used to be like, "What's that?" And like, pull on his wiener, you know? Because I didn't have one. And I was like, "What is that? I want one." Like, it's a fun little hose. Poor guy, you're doing this. It you're was doing this the big. little pinch. Christian shooty. Oh Shout my out, God. Christian shooty. We bet your dick. Your dick has got Baby. bigger. We it know was it has. so tiny. Oh my God. No, because baby dicks are small, right? Well, it's not a baby, right? <laughs> I mean, we is were five. he five or a baby? Because were you the abuser? We were both five. Okay. And we used to hide Allegedly. under his pool table and we used to just like touch each other. And then one day he came down and he's like, my mom says we can't play this game anymore. And I was like, you told your mom, you little narc. You fucking snitch. You fucking loser. <laughs> yes. You're never going to get any pussy Beat when you up. get older. Dead. All right, or anyway. now. <laughs> Guys, listen. Well, I'm sweating. <laughs> I took my jacket off and I'm still sweating. Oh my god. Okay, so uh, that's how Christmas started. And then Christmas Day. Oh god. Like it was Christmas, but it felt like Easter because so many motherfuckers resurrected from the dead. Like I was like all these guys that I fucked around with in 2023 like popped in to just be like, "Oh." <laughs> and I need to talk about one in particular. Let's do Can it. I Let's do fucking it? throw him into the broiler. <laughs> So we do here on this is the worst podcast. It's broiler time. It's, broiler time. <laughs> it's time to get broiled like a fucking hot chicken. Go ahead and say his first and last name <laughs> and middle name. Also address. Okay, we're gonna call him G Unit for G Unit. I'm dead. It actually is <laughs> E Unit. It's fifty. It's fifty. It's fifty cent. In yeah. the game, it's both of them. <laughs> No, we're going to call him G-Unit for anonymity. But he, in September, slid into my DMs. He's an NBA player on the East Coast. Let's just say that. Um, <clears throat> NBA player for me, immediate no. And by that, I mean yes. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. You fucked like half the NBA. Uh, it's very confused. It's like, you don't even get in the NBA unless you fuck Britney. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's how many people she's fucked that have been. I'm like, I literally be watching sports and she's like, fuck that guy, fuck that guy, fuck that guy. I'm like, are you? Not anymore. They've aged out. They're pretty much like retired. Or There's only like six left in the NBA that are active. <laughs> Maybe seven. Okay. Anyway. So who cares? Not a lot. It used to be a lot more. So this guy slides in my DMs and I posted something on my Instagram being like, this is my last show before I retire and marry rich. And he's like, where can I apply to be your rich husband? And I was like, you can't. You're an athlete. I'm not interested. Whatever. So he full court presses me into like, I'm different than all these other athletes. Like, let me show you who hurt you, like all this shit. And so I was bored on tour and I went and I saw him. I went and hooked up with him in San Francisco. We had like a nice night. And then after that, he was FaceTiming me like three times a day. And then I was like, okay, whatever. The sex was good. I'm going to make a plan to go see him again. So I was like, how about I come to where you live this weekend and he's like got weird he was like you're being a diva i told him to like send me a car and he's like i tell you when i send you a car he was like being a fucking diva and i was like okay this is weird and then we like kind of went back and forth where i would like stop talking to him and then he would resurface and stop talking he resurfaced again on christmas and he's like oh, oh santa claus bitch <laughs> he's like, dead oh, 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 i got I'm a here. gift for you <laughs> dick in a box yeah. like every guy yeah and he's like if I was, you know, where he lived, he's like, I would just drive to Milwaukee and come hang out with you. I'm like, my dad would shoot you. Uh, <laughs> if you just drove up to our house, my dad would fucking shoot you. And he's like, when am I going to see you again? And I I was like, I'm not going to see you again. It's not a match. Like, we're not a match. Like, when I tried to make a plan to come see you, you were like, you like swerved me. Uh -huh. And then he says to me, he's like... Well, I didn't want you to get the wrong impression. I didn't want you to see me again and think that we were something. And I'm like, bro, I don't get guys like this. Listen, guys who chase women, like chase, chase them. like police chase. Like, like 
there's this is the fucked up thing about some guys, and I know a lot of girls can relate to this. Guys will literally hunt you Down. like they are fucking cavemen, and then once you're interested, they're like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa crazy! Pump whoa. the brakes!" Even though they had a full Easy. spear ready to fucking <laughs> just take you back to their, they had a bat ready to fucking club you over the head and take you back to their lair. You fucking, as soon as you like them back, they're like, I, 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 I just was interested as friends. Whoa. I just wanted to be friends. I thought you had a cool friend vibe. Whoa. Like, you cannot like dudes back, at least for like a year. Ever. Like, you really you can't, can't ever like them back. You can't ever. Listen, I was. I'm my, married. You can't like them back ever. Okay. I still don't like my husband. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. no but you literally, know I, it ripped the side block out of my mental Jenga. Like, the whole tower fell down. I was just like, you're the one who's like, I'm not like Chased all athletes. You, yeah. I, yeah. I want to be your husband. Yeah, I want to be this. Husband. I want to be that. I literally give him one chance. We hang out once. I try and hang out twice because I'm fucking horny and I'm not fucking anyone else. And then he's like, well, I just don't want you to get the wrong impression. I'm like, oh, oh, because you gave me the wrong impression. Yeah. Like you fucking said, first of all, I would not date you. You are not hot enough and you live on the East Coast and there's a million things that aren't working for me. Sorry. The roast is alive and well. <laughs> like, it's just not happening. But then, like, it made me so mad. I was, like, the the flippery of the script. Dude, I dated a guy like this before my husband who I literally, like, this man looked like an actual thumb. Oh, like, yeah, he a did. Thumb. You showed me him. Like, I was, like, a hairy one. And I was not interested in this person at all, right? And he chased me like Down. he would Chased write me poems you. and shit oh that's, poems. A, that's a red like, flag I got, what you got, were you doing you got a dude writing poems like get the fuck out of here <laughs> yeah. like it's not it, nine, it's call not, the police it's not 1809 okay yeah. this guy is an F Scott Fitzgerald alright <laughs> like you need to just if he's writing you poems just fucking just do Alert yourself the a favor don't don't keep going because eventually what's going to happen is he's going to win you over with his personality and you're going to be like oh maybe I should give ugly guys a chance because the ugly guys maybe won't hurt my feelings, and then they're gonna cheat on you with prostitutes, and then try, and then try, <laughs> Every time. and then try to drag your name through the press and make it seem like it was your fault somehow. So just yeah. don't do that. Like, do not listen. Did I, you ever think of becoming a prostitute? No, <laughs> I could never. I'm done. I'm Again. like, can I be one? No, yeah. but no. But I literally was so pathetic. This guy. The thing is, is when, especially when like a not good looking dude then starts to reject you, your self esteem just fucking boom. Like, cause you're like, if this not good looking dude is rejecting me, holy fuck. Like, yeah. and then I just got really pathetic in the relationship. I lost all my self esteem. I was like, he was like, well, I just want to be able to have sex with other people. And I was like, okay, well, can we do it together? Like, that's how pathetic yeah. I got. And then we were like having sex with like, prostitutes not prostitutes um porn stars together because okay. most porn star most i don't want to say all but a lot of them are also escorts mm -hmm. like a lot of a lot of um porn stars life hack if they have an email in their bio you can usually email it and ask them you know what their rate is or whatever i'm gonna put my email in the bio <laughs> so, Brittany, i will fucking kill you i'm dead <laughs> Um, but anyway, yeah, it was a really low point in my life, but I'm just saying I relate yeah. to that because this is what some guys do. And, and, and for some guys, you know, for them, it is just the chase. Once they get yeah. you, the game is over. Right. And that inherent, you know, thing of being a hunter, it goes away, right. you know, once you like them. But I do think it's funny what's happening with this guy because every time Britney starts to blow this guy off, he goes back into hunter mode. You know, and he's he tries so to get her again. And that's just what's annoying about it. And then so if you annoying. were to give in to him, then he's not interested. So it's like, how yeah. do you win? You right? don't. You just walk away or just go. I'm going to go fucking hunt him with an actual gun. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. OK, here's the other thing. When I first started talking to him and I it was like week one, I never checked who he was following on Instagram. And do you ever do this? Well, you're not dating. Never mind with guys. But like I'd never checked who he was following on Instagram. And then when I did check, he was following like 2,700 sluts. Like 2,700? It was so many. First of all, no one should be following 2,700 people. Period. When I see people following that many people, I'm like, dude, Red what flag. the fuck? Yeah. I'm like, you know, you don't have to follow every girl you've ever talk to right or not talk to right <laughs> right exactly or liked her nipples yeah yeah i mean there's girls with like and i'm not judging like yeah. go off you fucking ig thoughts i love that but yeah. like it was all ig thoughts and so i remember i like clocked the number in my head of how many he was following and i said to him i was like i don't think this is a match because like literally if i told my friends i was talking to i would be embarrassed by who you're following on instagram mm. and he like made a big stink about it we kept talking because i'm bored and weak and <laughs> and then in my, I was like, I wonder how many more. 
he's followed since we started talking. Oh boy, thirty six. Yeah, and you, you're counting. I'm, no, I'm not. Ca- I just like mentally clocked the it. Up. Up. Yeah, the number is going up, yeah. and I'm like, and for reference, we haven't been talking for thirty six weeks. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Like he is aggressively following sluts on Instagram. Where I'm like, listen, and we love a slut. We love. I'm. I when I'm in my when I was single, I was a slut. Listen, there's no slut shaming here. I wish I it's could not be a the slut gr- again. It's not the girls that are the problem. No, to be honest, no. girls are just out there living their lives. Free the nipple, free the mm. pussy, free it all. But no, no, no. I'm, I'm saying, not judging the girls but at all. I'm saying like the thing is, is like, and also dudes when they're single, it's like okay, if you're a single guy and you want to follow a bunch of girls that are you know whatever showing their shit on Instagram, fine, you're single. Yeah. But as soon as you get into a relationship, I think that shit should stop. Yeah. I mean, I, think, I don't know. I think personally, that's kind of. I think even if you want to be considered by a quality woman, like yeah. you should not be following every single hot girl you've ever seen in your life. I think because like, yeah. Sorry, I said to him, I was like, "How would you feel if I was following twenty seven hundred athletes?" Does he know you've banged twenty seven hundred <laughs> athletes? You're like, I'm not following but, them, but, but I did bang them. But I'm classy in that I don't follow them because I don't kiss and tell, and I don't want people to know. I used to follow every guy Brittany. I fucked, and then I was like, this is out of control. Brittany, I can't. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's do Holiday Wars. Let's do everyone let's else's do ho- Holiday Wars. Let's do Holiday Wars. Let's talk about your guys' worst. We've talked about, clearly, we have a lot of worst. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany and I are just going to end up taking up the whole podcast yeah. with Brittany's therapy. Um, and yeah, but let's get to what you guys wrote in. Go ahead, Britt. You want to okay. start us off? So we are getting to your guys' worst now. Um, they're all anonymous. The first one, my dad died when I was 10. So when I was 15, my mom started dating someone called Farmer John. He owned an apple orchard and came over for Christmas. And I asked him about the orchard and he said, you've got some nice A is for apples yourself. He was talking about my small boobs, Ew. which I was already insecure about. But to have your mom's weird boyfriend hit on you gave me an ick that still lives in me. I wanted to make like my dad and die. <laughs> Jesus, this girl sounds like she could be your best friend. Honestly. Dude, what's up with creepy stepdads? Oh, my God. Just, yeah. Did you ever have a creepy stepdad? Oh, yeah. Well, not a stepdad, but my mom dated this guy. His name was Mike. And I always got... <laughs> Just call him out, Mike. Mike Ewart. He was a fucking piece of shit, and I will call him out. Because he would do this thing where he would make out with my mom and grab her ass, but his eyes would be open, and he'd be looking at me. Ew! I hate that. And like we, my sister and I got very uncomfortable when he would touch my mom. So he would do it on purpose. He would like, like grab her ass, but it was like fingers in the pussy through the pants and just like make (laughs) eye contact with us. And I'm like, I also have never been sexually assaulted as a child, but that's close. That's like pretty fucking. That's pretty close. And then when I was 16, I was in high school and I was at my friend's house and it was right next door to the bar that he always went to. So my mom and Mike broke up and I, he was walking in. I was like, Oh my God, that's Mike Ewart. And my friend thought it would be funny to call his name. She's like, Mike, it's Brittany. Do you remember her? And he like got up to the balcony and he's like, I always knew you were going to be hot. And I was 16. Straight to jail. Straight to jail. <laughs> Straight to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect I love how you said his first and last name. Because I fucking hate him. Okay, and like, maybe, we, maybe we bleep out the last name. No. Come, no? No. All right. Fuck we're fucking him. putting him straight to jail. <laughs> straight to jail. Straight to jail straight to for jail. you, Mike. Um, <laughs> that's disgusting. Isn't that gross? Did you ever have a gross? Okay, so my mom is super pretty. Like, your mom was super pretty. Yeah. And um, my mom, thank God, is with a really cool guy named Gary. Shout out to Gary. We Gary. love we love Gary. Gary's a really <laughs> fucking good guy. We love Gary. She's been with Gary for like 10 years. Gary, you better put a ring on it soon. Um, So my mom dated this guy before Gary, who I'm not going to. All right. His name was Steve. Um, (laughs) I'm like, I'm not going to jail. Straight to jail. Um, jail. Listen, Steve was a massive (laughs) alcoholic and put my mom through actual hell. Um, And I remember one time I was wearing some jeans and I stood up and I was walking through their apartment And he was like, wow, you got a nice butt like your mom. And I was like 14. Mm. And I was like, all right, well, never coming over again. (laughs) It was like the one time I visited. I know. (laughs) It was like the one time I visited and I never never visited. I'm like, all right, that's confirmation that I will never be visiting again. Yeah, Yeah, totally not good. You would never believe how horny I am also. (laughs) Like I was like, see what my pillow gets into. It, dude, but. I only fucked pillows. Okay, so yeah. I'm not interested in you, Steve. All right, unless you were a plushie. Um, but yeah, it was very uncomfortable. I did not like that at Horrifying. all. Yeah, and it's actually so weird. You know, I, Gary is my mom's like one boyfriend who I actually feel like cozy around. You yeah. know, like he's not like a creep. 
he doesn't give you the eyes. He doesn't like yeah. look at you, you know? Yeah. Because I just feel like it's like, and I don't know if it's, you know, a thing, but I used to also nanny when I was young, when I was in, in high school. I was a nanny the whole time through high school. And I would nanny for this artist lady who was absolutely beautiful, right? Mm-hmm. And she had this husband. And I remember he used to always just like look me right in the eyes and be like, how are you? You need a ride home? I'm like, I literally drove here. Yeah. Um, You know what I mean? He's like, I can give you a ride home anyway. I'm like, what? So I can like come pick up my car tomorrow? Yeah. Or like, <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. I don't really get. You need to tow my car? Yeah, like, like what's what happening? Here? It was super weird. But yeah, I mean, those vibes are just not yeah. it. Dude, speaking of which, Nick. the fucking Epstein list. Oh my God. Speaking of young children, Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking. <laughs> Did you see that thing I sent the group today? Yeah, <laughs> Stephen Hawking coming to defend himself, just a wheelchair on fire. I mean, that's kind of crazy, right? I mean, I mean what could all... he actually get into? Let's be honest, right? I, I, I don't know. I like I I think I have to dissociate with that kind of stuff because I'm just like, I don't even want to think about the atrocities that people are capable of. Well, it's really sad because it's so many powerful people that have swept so many things under the rug and right. it's so disturbing. And the fact that, you know, there's girls, so many young ass girls that have come out and been like, I was there. Yeah. And the fact that some of the people that are there, it's just like, wow, you know, like why why go there? You yeah. know what I mean? Why would you hang around people like that that are having children at their parties in a sexual way? I know. I can't. I, I literally can't. It gives People me, are like, just actual, into all. Yeah. Like, makes me want to throw up. Yeah. But yeah. Um, all right. Let's, should we keep going? Okay. Yeah. Do you want to do the next one? Sure. I'll do the next one. All right. Let's see. Anonymous. All right. Here we go. When I first, oh, is this, okay. Here. Sorry. Okay. Here we go. I just, you guys just find out I can't read. I'm like, <laughs> okay. So, uh, 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 I'm dead. Okay. I went out alone for New Year's Eve in Detroit and I met this girl and she told me that she could out drink me. So at 11 p.m. we started taking one shot every five minutes. And then at midnight when we kissed, she threw up in my mouth. (laughs) Bro. Oh my God. Bro. Bro. Oh my, I mean, I've thrown up on a dick like everyone else. You have? You haven't? Girl, no. What? I got like no gag reflex. I don't know why. Oh, my okay. husband must have searched me on some kind of database because I'm like the perfect <laughs> wife for him. I can, I don't know if it's because I used to like make myself throw up when I was younger a little bit. And okay, now I can yeah. just stick stuff really far down my throat and then nothing happens. But yeah. But yeah. Yeah, no, I've thrown up on a few dicks. Really? But not like, here's the thing. I thought. I was doing a pretty good job because I would catch it all in my mouth and then swallow it. They'd be like, what's that weird hot sensation? But I just, I Bro, had it under control. the smell. No? I was in a... How many dicks have you thrown up on, if you had to guess? Like three. Damn! I was in deep, deep blackouts. Like, the throwing up brought me out of the blackout. You know what I mean? Oh, so, so you like, were puking because you were drunk? Not because the dick was too big? Both. Oh my but I didn't God. used to have a gag reflex back in college, but I do now. I have a gag reflex now, so that sucks. Wow. <laughs> or not. Or not sucks, because yeah. you can't, apparently. Yeah. Um, wow, that's fucking crazy, dude. I've never puked on a dick. Okay, well, that's I guess crazy. you're better than me. <laughs> okay, well. Uh, that's fucking crazy, yeah. dude. Wow. I've had a guy throw up while he's having sex with me. On you? No, he ran to the bathroom <laughs> and threw up. <laughs> Tommy. Oh, yeah. I was like, I've heard this story. <laughs> this is the worst. Yeah, um, this is bad. But... I was on my, I was finishing my period yeah. and he wanted to have sex and I got crazy. I have crazy endometriosis and PCOS. And so when I get my period, it's like a murder scene. It is. I send Brittany pictures. She's I like, wish she did you? <laughs> I wish you would stop. They make me want to throw up. I'm like, Brittany, doesn't this look like a fetus? Yeah. And it's just not. It's just actually like one of my organs yeah. like deteriorated and coming out of my pussy. Um, yeah. So I get like chunky ass periods. Are you okay, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Mike's turning green over there. Um, I get really chunky ass periods, you know. And so I was like at the end of my period and I tell him, listen, we should not have sex. Yeah. And I mean, he's thrown up multiple times having sex with me because of weird shit. I'm not even lying. Seems like a pussy. Yeah, it's great. Um, My pussy never stinks, but weird shit does come out. It's like a cracker jacker box. You never know what you're going to get. Um, So we've been having sex and like 
he was fucking me and like the clots, like cause I'm cl- a clot, that's a huge clot. So, like I'm talking like this big. One of them came out on his dick. And he was like, oh, it's red worms. <laughs> he thought it was fucking worms, dude. And he fucking ran to the bathroom. He did one of those where his throw up was coming through his fingers. He was like, <laughs> and the throw up was just, <laughs> was just fucking coming out through the fingers. And he's like, it's worms. <laughs> and he went to the bathroom and literally he did one of those throw ups where it was like, <laughs> and it just came out straight. Like, <laughs> like an exorcist. Like exorcist. Yeah. Like he was like 20 feet from the toilet. And it just, <laughs> He's like, worms came out of your pussy. Oh. And that's when you realize your husband isn't that smart. I was like, duh, if you're yeah. just tell me, dude. Yeah. Fucking who doesn't love the puss worms? I'm dead. No, it was actually, it was oh like a crime God. scene. It was a crime scene. It was the longest clot I'd ever seen wrapped Brittany, around his you dick, have dude. To stop. We just lost Nobody 30. Cares we, just, about your we just lost 30 subscribers. Yeah, of our 77. I'm sweating. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Should anyway, we get the next one? Ever, yeah. Have All you right. ever had someone throw up in your mouth, though? No, dude. Ew. Okay. I didn't even have a boyfriend until I was like 18. Isn't that weird? I mean, I didn't have a boyfriend until my ex husband, but I was still <laughs> fucking. <laughs> I was still in them streets. Your ex-husband's still your boyfriend. <laughs> I, say it. I know. You guys hang out way too much. You hang out like, like once a month. It's fine. You guys hang out like every day. He's, my, he's my best friend. I'm just kidding. He's my best friend. Last night. Oh, I don't know if I should say this, but I'm going to say it. Okay. Last night. It's because I've been telling you I might. I have been thinking about a boob job. I don't even want one. I'm just bored. She uh, doesn't need one. Look at the boobs. They're so fucking cute. We did our little press release and someone is like, who is the flat chested chick? Dude, fuck <laughs> them. So many people liked it. I was like, I should get a boob job. Listen, fuck them. Can I just say something really quick? Yeah. These are my natural boobs as, as much as everyone doesn't believe it. But do you know how much all my life I wanted to be the Kate Moss, wafy, no tit girl? Like that's all I've wanted. I have to wear a bra with everything. Well, that's annoying to hear because you have a perfect body. <sighs> Why is it that every time we have a body or a whatever, we're like, we want something else? It's just life. <sighs> no it's one's lame. ever happy. <laughs> Welcome to life. None of us are happy. Okay. <laughs> so when I first moved to LA, I met a movie star who I thought was so handsome, funny, smart, and cool. He partied heavily and often and would always invite me, but never gave me the time of day. Like he would try and pawn me off on his friends and stuff. So it was New Year's Eve and we all popped some really strong molly and the party started dwindling. But I thought if I outlasted everyone, I'd finally have a chance with him. It was like 3 a.m. and he went missing and me and his house manager were in the kitchen smoking a blunt and he came downstairs kind of disheveled to get water. I walked over to him and I don't know what got into me, probably the molly, but I just dropped my knees and started sucking his dick. In front of the house, man? <laughs> it Damn. sounds like it. Damn, girl. He was soft for a while, I assumed the drugs, but then got into it and got hard and he finished and I popped up like I just won a prize. And then he told me, wow, I was just coming down here to wash my dick because I had a menage and the girls were in the bathroom. <laughs> So that's why his dick was soft and didn't taste great. Fuck my life. I'm sweating for this girl. Is Bro, this me? <laughs> she just ate pussy dick. <laughs> Two pussy dick. <laughs> Two pussy dick. Double pussy dick. Imagine you think you finally get to suck your crush's dick. And I want to know who the celebrity other. is. We need to get Dumois on this yeah. shit. Dude, who is the guy? House manager. We need more details. I know. We just responded to the email being like, like, who the fuck was it? Um, it? (laughs) That's disgusting. (gasps) That is the grossest thing. Bro. I've ever heard. Oh, like my husband sometimes will be fucking me and be like, Will you suck my dick? And I'm like, no. And that's my own pussy. Not unless I wipe it off first. I'm not trying to like definitely like suck dick in a threesome. But I've been in the threesome in the kitchen. (laughs) Not in the kitchen while the threesome is happening. Dude, this poor girl. Also, what did the house manager do? I know. I'm like, she just sucked his dick in front of the house manager. The house manager's just eating a clementine yeah. just in the kitchen, just, just like watching like it's a fucking. He's just filming it. Yeah, he's just, he's just filming it. Like, what? Oh, my God. Dude, I'm that's crying. so weird. It's the weirdest things that people do for famous people. Oh, my God. I know. Anything. Like, Anything. it's so weird. I, I hooked up with this famous dude once. Your um, husband? <laughs> yeah. No, I've hooked up with a couple famous people. This guy was on a really popular HBO show back in the day, and I was an extra okay. on the show. Love that. And he, we ended up, like, he ended up flirting with me, talking to me, invited me to his trailer. And then he was like, I want to hang out with you later. 
Um, and I was like, okay. And then we started hanging out. We became friends. And he was very cool and actually really nice, right? Mm -hmm. Super weird thing about the guy. He never wore shoes. <laughs> Even he, outdoors? Yeah. Okay. He was like a fucking flat earther or some shit. Like, okay. Who believed in grounding. He just was barefoot everywhere. Anyway. So the first time we had sex, and I think I've told this story <laughs> before, but he made like scary animal sounds. <gasps> Like he was like, uh, 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 and I was like, ah, like it was very <laughs> scary, but like I didn't move. Like I was just like, I'm getting fucked by a wildebeest. Right. Like that's what it sounded like. He was like, uh, 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 and I was like, chill. You're like, are we on safari? But he was like, so what? famous. I didn't say chill. I just laid there like, oh my yes, God, daddy. like this is what it gets, feels like to get fucked by a gorilla, I guess. Like what the fuck? The yes, noises Dada. were crazy. Oh my God. Like crazy. And I was like, okay, you know, well, I know his wife divorced him. Um, I can't deal with guys being weird in bed. That was very weird. I can't, I just can't deal with it. I, when I was young, I couldn't deal with dirty talk. Like mm -mm. when guys used to be like, you like the big dick girl. And I'd be like, well, it's not like the biggest, <laughs> you know, like if I'm going to, I'm pretty honest. So, but like dirty talk or like really loud coming too. Ew, I'm I hate like, that. You should be shot. Like I can't. Actually, I do like it when my own husband does just cause he's like, he doesn't do it like in a like lame way. He's just like, oh fuck. Like cool. He's cool about it. Yeah. But like other cool dudes that are like, mommy, <laughs> Hi, hi. Like yeah. they're like kind of scared. That's kind of yeah. weird. No, I don't like the big growly ones. Like what you were just growly like, like the, and big. Ah! Yeah, it's yeah. Like, bro. It's like kind of bruh. it's scary. It is. It's terrifying. I don't like the growly ones, but then the quiet ones are also weird. Like a completely I'm quiet. quiet. I'm quiet in bed. You're completely quiet. I'm pretty quiet. I don't make noise. Just like fucking a stuffed animal. I'm dead. <laughs> you or would fucking love it. a corpse. <laughs> you would love fucking me. I would love fucking you. Yeah. Maybe we'll try it sometime. Yeah. Um, that's weird. Just Thank silent? You. Not like dead silent. You don't silent, even be like, uh, like, uh, like if you enjoy it. A little it? bit of a, uh, a little bit Every of a. Every five uh, minutes she goes, meep, <laughs> meep. Brittany. Yeah, I'm pretty quiet. Wow. Because I just like don't want anyone to think I'm like having too good of a time. <laughs> like, I can't give him that much credit. Yeah, exactly. Brittany. Oh and also God. most guys don't know how to make me come. So I am just like uh, enduring. <laughs> I feel like most guys in general don't know how to make girls come. No. Am I wrong? No, you're right. Like I had I, one guy who for sure made me come in my entire life. And literally when I got divorced, I looked him up and I was like, where is he? He used to play basketball on the Marquette team. He never went pro. I was like, where did he go? He became a pastor. And him and his wife share an Instagram. So I'm like, this is going to be tricky to get to him, but I will go to a confessional. He's like, hey, Brittany, you can come to church. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, can come exactly. To church. <laughs> uh, I'll be like, ah, daddy. I'll be like, you mean father. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You read the next one? Okay. Okay. I'm Swinging done. into We're the new year. Our podcast can be four hours long. Okay, ready? <laughs> okay, this one. <clears throat> Here we go. Oh, boy. Yikes. All right. I like to reread a little bit. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do Woo! before the show. Remember? Dead. I'm dead. Many years ago on New Year's Eve, we, ex-boyfriend and I, went to a friend's house for dinner with three other married couple friends. I was super sick, but I agreed to go just for the dinner part. So I took a day quill, sucked it up, and went. After dinner, they all dropped Molly. My then boyfriend and I stayed sober. We were sitting in the living room on all of these soft pillows talking about funny stories and goals for the new year. Who does that after they do Molly? Soft hey pillows. Hey guys, let's do some Molly and talk like about new year's goals. goals. Yeah. Um, no, what happens next hilarious. is Molly. <laughs> for, <laughs> Molly's coming. <laughs> for the new year, one friend randomly t took off her top, crawled across the room, and started blowing my other friend's husband in front of all of us. The weird thing was the wife looked super happy about this. What the fuck? That's work for her. I knew he had some friends that on occasion might have threesomes, but I had no idea they were swingers. I looked at my then boyfriend and he must have seen how overwhelmed I was because he kissed me and told me quietly to just breathe and that we were going to give it a minute and would leave the situation. Hmm. So winging. Whoa, dude. Did you ever do that? Did you ever swing with your no, ex-husband? No, 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 no. No, I don't really like the whole swinging thing. Like I can tell you, like that's you know when I dated that guy and we would have threesomes with porn stars. I yeah. didn't, I didn't love it. I'm too jealous for a threesome. I just sit in the corner. I'm like, you like her, huh? 
I'm just like way too jealous. I like try and be cool. But even when I drank and was like a slut and younger, I would be like pissed when the other girl was getting dicked down. I would just be like, wow, I can't. Swing. I feel like you can't really like like the person if you're going to do a threesome. I'm such a like one woman. Or yeah. One guy. One man. Yeah, yeah. One guy gal. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, at least her ex-boyfriend was nice and told her to. Yeah, but then he dumped her, huh? I guess so. They like, they broke up. Like they didn't make it. He like ended up dating. He's like, actually, I'm a swinger. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you know what? You could have taken that way better and yeah. hooked up with one of my friends. Yeah. Um, that's really fucking weird. Yeah. There's a lot of swingers though in LA. There are. It's really weird, like how many people I've met that are married and then, like, when they're not with their partner, they're like flirting and yeah. and then I find out later that they have open relationships. Yeah. People always say that about Tommy and I. They're like, you guys have an open relationship. I'm like, no, we don't. And it's actually, the most closed. It's the most closed and actually it's so weird because Tommy is such a one woman guy. Mm -hmm. Like people don't realize that about him. Yeah. They think, oh man, he's a rock star. Like it must be so hard to, it must be so hard to keep it no. in your pants. No, my husband no. literally is so emotional. He can't even get a boner unless he's like in love with you. It's wow. so crazy. Like, yeah. it's so weird. Like, he, he did the um, Bill Maher podcast, and Bill Maher was like, man, it must be really hard when you're on the road. And he just kind of like laughs because it's yeah. like, he's not that guy at all. It's no, so literally, when he's on the road, he's texting you 24-7 and watching bonsais grow. Yeah, like, he literally... He's like the opposite of what you would think he is. When we are not together, he's like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. he's literally you, texting yeah, me right exactly. now. I'm he's like, I'm at a podcast. <laughs> he literally it's is. like, how's it going? What's going on? It's kind of funny, though, how people just make shit up. Yeah. They just love it. They love well, to just make shit up. That's what happens when you're... In the spotlight, oh, baby. God. <laughs> Speaking of throwing up. Okay. Okay. This one is dark. Are you down for dark? I'm always down for dark. Okay. When I was 17. Uh-oh. That's <laughs> underage. Are we allowed to tell the story? Yes. When I was 17, I watched a friend jump off a waterfall to his death on New Year's Eve in an attempt to impress a gal in our wider circle of friends. He didn't jump away far enough and hit a branch on the way down we were told by the paramedics that he likely died before hitting the water don't jump off waterfalls on new year's eve if you plan to see the new year you... i'm sorry i think death is funny um, Brittany. I, know, I know i have uh, it's trauma um, i'm like i don't want to die in front of you you'll just start cracking up I Fuck. Laugh. she's like at my funeral just cracking up <laughs> bitch i'll fucking kill you that's so sad but you know he was trying to get her attention so at least he now has it for ever. <laughs> if you watch somebody die, you never forget that. <laughs> that is so dark. I know. Dude, that's horrible. I know. What but, a fucking crazy, like. But also, like, guys are so stupid to think that we would be impressed by that. Like, did you see that guy jump into a waterfall? <laughs> I want to suck his dick off. Like, no oh, one too bad he's dead. <laughs> nobody never thinks fight. like that, though. Like, guys are so weird about that, too. Like, they always do shit and they think, like, that we're going to think it's rad. And it's like, you know we're not another dude, right? right. Like, another dude would be like, whoa, oh, yeah. bro, oh, that was sick. Yeah. I'll suck your dick, Yeah, you know? it's like the same way that girls, like, do hair and makeup for other girls and we, like, want to look hot for other girls. For other girls, yeah. yeah. And, like, guys do that stuff and they're like... The, this chick is gonna be impressed and the dudes are like yeah dude and, <laughs> and the, the like, chick's oh. like can we go shopping yeah. you know what would impress me if you bought me a purse right. <laughs> um, you know impress me yeah I literally dressed if you up were alive <laughs> god that's horrible rest in peace dude that's fucking sad man I hope he didn't suffer damn that's a gnarly okay, are we so ending is, on that or you is, got no, another no, no, one we're gonna do one more um, this is an unpopular opinion but I believe in my heart of hearts that jumping to your death would be kind of fun because you know when you go on a roller coaster and it's like the drop you're like woo I hate that part I love it so I think it would be like woo and then just lights out guys Brittany's whole life depends on this podcast <laughs> if it doesn't do well she might jump off a bridge <laughs> yeah I'm hanging on by a thread <laughs> Hanging on by a thread. <gasps> okay, so this next one is long. I just take you to suicide prevention after this <laughs> up in, in Culver City. I'm fine. I'm doing way better than I was last year. <laughs> I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm, just that clip at my I'm doing great. I'm doing just great. a single tear. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Runs in the family. <laughs> Okay, Brittany, this is a long one. Oh, great. I don't know if you can read that. Much. Oh, my God. We're doing this? 
Well, we is can this the one you want to do is the last <sighs> one? Well, you can pick any of those last three. Do you want to tell your worst holiday story? Yeah. I feel like that's a good one. Yeah, let's okay, do that. Okay, let's do that. Um, you have a really good worst holiday story. Okay, so, well, I don't know if I want to do the one about my mom or the one about New Year's Eve when I accidentally did meth. I feel like meth is more fun. <laughs> um, okay, so I was in New Year's Eve. I was... It was New Year's Eve. I was in Vegas with some friends and they we ran out of Molly and we needed more Molly. So my friend was like, here's money. Go get Molly. I'm in a club. I'm like, yeah, I got this. So I just like go up to the sketchiest looking guy in the club. And I thought I was being slick. I was like, do you have any M? And he's like, yeah, I only have one pill left, though. And I was like, OK, great. I buy it off of him. It's this big black pill. I've been doing Molly at this point for two years. I knew Molly was not a black pill, but I was like, fuck it. It's Vegas. Maybe it's different here. <laughs> Geograph- big geographic it was change. Like a dick pill. <laughs> <laughs> the Cialis. Um, so I pop it in my mouth and the guy's eyes get really big. He's like, oh no. He's like, that's for like three people. And I'm like, what do you mean it's for three? It's Molly. And he's like, no, you said M. You wanted M. And I was like, what? And he's like, it's, it's meth. And I was like, oh, oh no. Fuck. I was up for three days. I thought, <laughs> I, yeah. You just, you, just, you just turned into Crash Bandicoot. You were like, <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog just collecting rings. Just yes. fucking ding, 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 ding. ding, 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 ding oh my ding, God. Ding, 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 ding. And I go back to the guy who gave me the money. I was like, he didn't have anything. <laughs> just like, and then you just turned into a fucking yeah. tornado and spun away. Just like a whirling <laughs> dervish. Yeah. So I was like, fuck, 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 fuck. And like waiting for meth to hit is probably the worst feeling. Feeling. What did it feel like? It felt like Being when I used speed. to snort Adderall yeah. times like a hundred. And your heart was probably my heart was going crazy. I couldn't stop biting my fingers. I smoked like a pack of cigarettes an hour. I was like, <laughs> oh, sorry, I just spit on you, just like waiting for it to get it was horrible. And then I was working a day job at the time. So we had off on the first, but the second we had to be back to work. And by the second, I still hadn't slept. And so I show up to work and I'm like see-through. I'm like so white. My hair is like greasy and matted. And the guy who owned the company who helped me get the job at that agency came in. He never came in. And he comes in and he sees me like sweating in a corner. And he's like, hey, uh, what the fuck are you doing with your life? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm good. What's up? What's up with you? How are you doing? How's your holiday? Everything good? Everything good? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. fine. Like literally. He's like, when was the last time you slept? I'm like... Happy, uh, I was like, happy new year to you too, <laughs> asshole. But do I look bad? <laughs> Brittany. Yeah, Weren't you really... afraid you were going to have a heart attack? No. I mean, when it's time to go, it's time to go. <laughs> That's Bruh, this is why I couldn't do drugs because like I like I can't do drugs. I'm too paranoid. I'm always like it's gonna kill me. Even when I smoked weed for the first time, I went to the emergency room. You pussy. I'm such a pussy. I smoked like the tiniest bit of weed and I got like a little high and I was like, I don't like it. I don't like it. I like to be in control. And I went to the emergency room and they were like, what happened? And I was like, was scared to tell them. I yeah. thought I was gonna get arrested. Right, right, right. And Naturally. then I finally I was like, I smoked weed. And they're like, get the fuck out, you little fucking. Yeah, pussy. there's like there's people in here dying. Yeah, yeah, there's like a guy next to me just having fucking yeah. his fucking diabetes flare up. And I'm like, I smoke some pot. I don't like it. I feel uncomfortable. Yeah. They're like, go home and eat a fucking piece of bread, you piece of shit. Literally. Yeah. Oh, my God. People I'm always dead. think I do drugs. I'm hyper, but like, I can't. I like, don't I can't like believe them. you don't. No. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, can't believe I don't. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay. Do you have any holiday worse? My holiday worst. Um... Like a bad New Year's Eve, a bad Christmas. Oh, I have a, this is funny. This was like when my parents first got divorced. Mm -hmm. I was like probably six, five or six. And it was the first Christmas without my mom there. And my dad was just like a wreck. Because my dad's like super religious. And I grew up like very religious. And, uh, you know, he didn't believe in divorce. Even Mm -hmm. if like the marriage was not going well, my dad was like, we stick it out till the end. We made a pact. You know what I mean? Like my dad wasn't the kind of guy to like break a deal like that. Um, So he was very sad that they got divorced and I remember it was Christmas Eve and the tree like was the first year we got like a fake tree it was just like one of those trees that's just like the worst fake tree like you could just see the wall behind it like no matter how many ornaments you put on it it's like a fucking yeah it's like a Snoopy tree or it's like the Grinch tree just like horrible just the worst fake tree ever and I just remember like the house wasn't really decorated you know because my mom used to do all that stuff it's and depressing dad vibes. It was, it was just yeah, dad it's like vibes, single right? dad vibes. Single yeah, dad vibes. Sad. So the Christmas morning, my brother and I wake up so excited. We're like, yay, Christmas. You know, we were so excited. And we go downstairs 
and there's nothing Aww. under the tree. Santa did not. And come. I was like, ah! <laughs> and we like ran to my dad's room. You know, kids, we get up at like 5 a.m. Right, on right. Christmas, right? Right. And my, we go up to my dad's room. My dad's like in a deep depression. We're like, <laughs> Dad, there's no presents. Santa, Santa forgot us. Like, he hates yeah. us. Why? Santa hate us. Like, mom. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> Santa's fucking mom, isn't he? Isn't she? Just tell us the truth. <laughs> and then finally, my dad just like, oh my God. And he felt so bad. And he jumped out of bed and he's like, oh, hang on. And he had his fucking underwear on. And like, my dad used to wear like tidy whiteies. And I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, that was already <laughs> the worst. Like, dad, I can see your nuts. Like, it was very like uncomfortable. That was traumatizing. And then he goes into the closet and he opens the closet. And I'm like, Dad, why did Santa put the <laughs> presents in the closet? And he's like, "Oh, he must have got confused." Like, Santa's not real, Brittany. <laughs> no, but he like he like literally made up a lie. He's like, "Santa must have got confused and thought like we wanted them in the closet." I'm like, "That's fucking weird, Dad. Are you fucking lying to me?" He's like, "No," and he's just taking all the presents, wrapped all shitty, starts putting them under the tree. I'm like, "Dad, this is the worst Christmas ever." And then it was like shitty because he was like so depressed and like he worked so much, he barely had time to like really get us a bunch of shit. But like he gets us shit all year long. Yeah. You know what I mean? Aww. So yeah, that was pretty depressing. But yeah, he's still the best. He, he oh tried his he tried his hardest. <laughs> Dads are the best. My I dad used that. to wrap our Christmas presents post divorce. He would wrap our Christmas presents in newspaper. Newspaper, yeah. <laughs> That's such a fucking divorced dad move. I mean, I don't know, whatever. And then it the comic even... section. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it was colorful. Colorful, totally. Oh my God, yeah, is yeah. that funny? You silly dads. Silly daddies. We love They're you. They're the best. Okay, we are going to do bad advice now, which is people write in and we're going to give you our unsolicited and horrible advice on whatever the fuck you're asking. It's just basically any advice we would give. It's just going to yeah. be bad. Okay, my boyfriend got so drunk he peed on my, in my bed on Christmas Eve. I barely slept, woke up in a puddle, and I had a mental breakdown at 4 a.m. while changing the sheets. He barely moved during the ordeal. It was the worst day and night of my life. What would you do in this situation? Well, I can tell you what I'd do because it happened to me. What? Yeah, Tommy when? pissed the bed. Yeah. When? At Chateau Marmont. <gasps> We when he used to drink. Oh, okay, because that's a thing when when yeah. you, when guys are really bad drunks. Sometimes they just you're sleeping. Yeah. I mean yeah. that's probably the same situation. Yeah. And they they have a dream that they're using the toilet. Yeah, and then and he the fucking bed. pissed the bed at Chateau Marmont, <gasps> and it was the middle of the night. And I was like, why does it feel warm? Oh, it's and I, the worst. The bed, it's warm and then it's cold. Yeah, and then I yeah. was like, ew, I'm all wet. Yeah. And like what happened? And then I woke up and I was like, dude, you fucking pissed the bed and I was so pissed because I was yeah. like sleeping and it was the middle of the yeah. night and he was like ah oh, this place is haunted anyway <laughs> let's get out of here <laughs> like, this place killed John Belushi <laughs> anyways he's like I think a ghost <laughs> sucked my dick and I came like he literally like Tommy just, just like you said. Tommy just literally never apologizes he's just like ah this place is fucking haunted <laughs> he's like I saw spirits on the ceiling I fucking pissed myself I'm like dude you fucking drank it way dude. too much yeah this was like when he was drinking oh my god that's yeah, so funny yeah. I had a girlfriend do that to me we did, popped Molly and then she came back to my place and we slept and then I woke up in the middle of the night and I was like oh she peed the bed Ew. and then I was like hey girl I think you peed and she's like no you did <laughs> I was like, you're like bitch I will fuck you up I did Molly but I'm also not Right, like, like, I know I if I fucking Molly, beat but... myself or not. Like... I know how to do drugs, sis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I remember when I was like getting rid of that mattress after Chris and I moved in together. That was like the mattress we des decided to get rid of, and we put it up in the alley. And there's a big pee stain on it. And Chris <sighs> is like, "You pee the bed?" And I was like, "No." <laughs> that was my friend. He's like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Just had to fucking yeah. not believe you. Yeah. Yeah. I also remember, and I think I told this story before. I had this girl sleep over my house when I was younger, and she's like, "I have to pee so." bad my mom was in the ba upstairs bathroom taking a shower and then there was a bathroom downstairs and I was like just use the bathroom downstairs oh, but she yeah, was like too us. scared yeah right so then she just stands up she goes next to the bed she picks up the sleeve of her t-shirt <gasps> like a long sleeve t-shirt and she starts peeing through it onto the floor just like a f cotton funnel. Yeah, like a cotton funnel. I'm like, dude, what did you think that was going to do? Like tube it up? Like Go what the, the yard, fuck, dude? Like going to be an animal. It was so weird. And then my mom, like, because she just didn't have good reactions to stuff like that. 
<laughs> my mom got out of the shower and she came in and I mean we were like we were like five we yeah. were young and my mom came in and instead of being like a nice like oh yeah. it's okay my mom was like what the fuck is wrong with you you dumbass <laughs> like who the fuck pisses on the fucking rug and she's all sc- fucking scrubbing it and she just got out of the shower one of her titties is hanging out and she, my friend was like traumatized she was like because my mom had one was that my friend had one of those moms that was like it's okay yeah, yeah, yeah. you know I'm well like, obviously if she's peeing on the floor maybe she needed your mom I'm like welcome to hell baby they're gonna get the fucking truth right now my mom's all fucking scrubbing welcome it like hell, grow bro. up Rachel use the fucking bathroom her fucking tits all hanging out she's pissed as shit the stain's never gonna come out what did you eat vitamin C it's yellow as fuck like she was so pissed. oh my yeah. god I anyway hate you. so yeah what would you do fucking grow up everyone gets pissed on yeah Claire, there's the bad advice grow up everyone, everyone gets, gets pissed fucking on. pissed on if you've never been pissed on you you're not you're living. Not living. <laughs> you're not living all right here we go bad advice all right my dad is a narcissist oh i've dated a couple of those mm-hmm. i've dated he- your dad <laughs> <laughs> he's always he's always been but now as a 31 year old i've only started realizing this due to intense manipulation i've been subjected to my whole life this past christmas immediately following dinner he asked all of the in-laws to go to the basement with all the children. By the way, this was a very tiny basement. There were four adults and six kids headed down so that he could briefly talk to his children in private. He did this so that he could tell his children that he's rewriting their will and that he wanted to know which one of his 12 children wanted to be included in a certain part of this will that if they said yes would involve those children needing to invest their money yearly from here on out in a small potential that someday in the next 30 to 50 years they might inherit it. No guarantee because this portion of the inheritance is a company that he actually shares with seven other people that all need to die along (laughs) with their spouses before it actually ends up in their children's hands. Okay, so your dad's trying to get you in on a Ponzi scheme. Got it. We love a pyramid scheme on Christmas. (laughs) All this turned out to be a scheme for our dad to get money from his children to pay for his seventh portion of ownership towards the company, which he can't afford and hasn't been able to afford for years. Needless to say, that conversation ended very quickly and we immediately immediately after and we immediately left afterwards and haven't spoken since have you ever heard of someone investing in a potential inheritance what do i do wait a minute first of all the math ain't math in here he has 12 children but there's six kids and four adults what's the split on that he's like which one of his 12 children <laughs> But there's first of all, why does your dad have 12 kids? Calm first the of fuck all, down. First of all, tell someone, him to invest in condoms. Yeah, somebody <laughs> should have bought your dad some condoms for Christmas. Jesus yeah. Christ. It's too many. I mean, I, I don't know. This is just like my mom used to ask me for money all the time. Mentally. She did? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was in over her head. She would like, I she had, I had her blocked on everything and then she would like LinkedIn message me. Be like, ask one of those NBA players you're fucking to give me $50,000. I'm like, I would like for them to give me $50,000. Are like, you think serious? Of, oh, yeah. She, but I just feel like mentally ill parents do this shit all the time. I can luckily say that my parents have never asked me for money. Um, but I just feel like in any situation when someone's asking you to invest in something up front and they're going to get something later down the road, like it just doesn't sound. I mean, also, unless like, it's like a solid investment business plan where you're like, okay, I can see here's what I put in. Here's what I got. I mean, you need lawyers and contracts and yeah. all that. I just wouldn't. This is horrible. My rule of thumb is I don't invest any in anything that gets pitched to me in a basement. <laughs> If no, you have they to take me downstairs. No, they weren't in the basement. They were upstairs and everyone else was in the basement so they couldn't hear the dad's fucked up plan. The, all the other family members were in the basement. How did we get them all downstairs? I have a he lot of questions He made them all go this. downstairs. It's fucking weird. This okay, sounds this like a strange weird, family. This, yeah. Listen, if I would stay away from your dad. I mean, that's just my I personal opinion. I would block opinion. your dad. I don't, I don't <laughs> ever say to like cut parents off completely because Lord knows I have a parent wound that I'm always just <laughs> trying to heal, but... I think that when it comes to stuff like that, when your parents are actually like not thinking about your best interest and they're putting themselves before you, that's just like kind of sad. Like they don't care about how you're going to end up. That's. And I would say what you just gave is actually good advice, but this is bad advice. So. Oh, yeah, bad <laughs> advice. Never mind. Uh, give your dad Plug the it. money and yeah. uh, fuck your life. Um, yeah. Give him all your money and block his yeah. money. Anyway, yeah. guys, this has been crazy first podcast. I've oh had so much fun. I hope you guys are excited. Eventually down the line, we're going to have some fun guests that are going to tune in and tell good, their words. Our good news. Oh, good news. I'm so sorry. I almost forgot about good news. Uh, yeah, okay. It's... Did you write some good news down? Well, yeah. Okay, great. You know. Let's hear it. Okay. 
Uh, Sorry, we don't want everything to be terrible in life. Okay, and I also have to cite my source on this because I straight up stole all of my good news from Tank's Good News Online because I love that and it makes me very happy. But basically over Christmas, a search and rescue dog saved a child from a snow fort after a plow went by and trapped the kid in the snow fort. And... um, but they didn't rescue him till midnight, though, so I do wonder what his parents were up to. <laughs> I do wonder. Have you seen little Billy? <laughs> yeah. No. Like, Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Me as a parent. Yeah. He's been awfully quiet. Yeah. Wow. God is good. Yeah. My, <laughs> Amen. My Christmas, is, my Christmas present is. The parents plan the whole thing. They're like, God damn it. Yeah. Fuck. We almost dog. got away with little Billy getting fucking turned into a popsicle. Yeah, I would be like, <laughs> leave me the dog. You keep the kid. <laughs> kids are so annoying oh my god but uh, yeah i do wonder how it did, uh, did take them till midnight to realize that the kid was trapped in that's a snow horrible fort. did you ever build snow forts growing hell up hell yeah me too many and yeah. they were dope they were fucking rad i was so I'd good run away i'd too. be like i'm gonna go live in this house <laughs> <laughs> it's warmer in here yeah. <laughs> there's more love <laughs> wow that's good news yeah that's great news. i like that yeah so anyway that's our little piece of good i news. have another piece of good news okay what um so um there's this new company, um, Dr. David Sinclair, who, if you look him up, he is like the doctor to go to for longevity and helping you live longer. Just ordered these. Yeah, so I'm really excited. And this isn't a, this isn't a promo. We're not getting paid for this. But um, he works with this company called Leap Year Dogs. And basically what they did is they figured out a way to extend dogs' lives through these little vitamins. And I started giving them to Nina. And Nina is almost 10. And she was getting to the point where she just would eat breakfast and, like, lay down and not really do anything. I'm telling you, now this dog is running around playing ball, like, chasing uh, teeny, like, being so hyper. And, I mean, I I don't know how, how, you know, I like I said, she's only been taking it for a little bit. And this is not Biggie just got his first one this morning. Yeah. So it's like it's so apparently like dogs that are like midlife, you'd give this to them. And in all of our bodies, there are these things called telomeres. Um, This is also a science podcast, by the (laughs) way, guys. All right. Uh, I got my science glasses on. Watch out, Huberman. We're coming for you. Here we go. Um, And everyone's bodies, there are these things called telomeres. And the things that make us age is that as we get older, our telomeres shorten. Okay? So Dr. David Sinclair's whole study and thing is just to study how to lengthen your telomeres so that you essentially never age. And a lot of them do this by taking like NAD, NMN, all that Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, So that – you you guys can look that up on your own. But anyway, so they figured out a way to make this vitamin for dogs that has been – they've been testing it and it's really working. And it's reversing. It can – you know, they're claiming it can add an additional like you know a couple years to your dog's life which is great news that's amazing and we love that because dogs are our best friends they haven't figured it out for humans yet they haven't figured it out for cats but they figured it out for dogs and i think dogs deserve it dogs are more important than all those things you they're more important than all of us yeah 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 Oh my god, you guys, we did it. It's our first episode. I hope you enjoyed it. We love Please. it. Let's end the podcast with a booby shake. Booby. Boobies. <laughs> okay, be sure to like and subscribe. New episodes every Wednesday. Next week, we are chatting about hookup worse. So send us yours. Write in your worse or ask us for bad advice at this is the worst pod at justmediahouse.com. Once again, that's this is the worst pod at justmediahouse.com. We love you guys. Love you. Bye from Bye. the Britneys. Thank you guys for listening to This is the Worst podcast powered by Just Media House. This is the Worst is hosted and executive produced by Brittany Furlan Lee and Brittany Schmidt. If you enjoyed our show, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, rate, and review. Stay connected with us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and Snapchat at This is the Worst Pod. Studio provided by Second Floor Studios, podcast and social artwork produced by The Forward Digital and Product Limited. Thank you to our post-production team at Creative Evolution Studios. Theme song to This Is The Worst podcast performed by Midnight Noise. This is the worst where we are going to make the best of the worst. Oh, we're rolling. We're fucking... Mike's on Molly. He's fucking rolling. Everyone's fine? Everyone's fine. I'm fine, yeah. She's having a fucking Not mentally, panic. but you know. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> well, never will be that way. Yeah. <laughs> never will be fine mentally. Okay, that's well, good. Maybe one day. No. Probably not. Let's not get our hopes up. <laughs> I'm not gonna. It's been a lot of years of being not fine mentally. Yeah. I'm not gonna get my hopes up that one day I will all of a sudden be fine mentally. Uh, someone's texting me. <laughs> is it Tommy? How unprofessional. You know what it is, Tommy? He's sending me... Dick, dick pics. He's, He's sending, sending me... me-
TikTok. I imagine that. I was like, hey, babe, I got to go to a podcast. Don't text me. He's like, okay, just here's 45 TikToks. <laughs> I would okay, imagine just real quick. His dick pics come in like five parts because <laughs> they're so long. He shoots <laughs> them in pano. Yeah. I'm dead. I'm dead. Or like a sunset. <laughs>